So while we have this acceptance for relationship and all that, we are always told that there is struggle for survival, survival of the fittest. And that's what seems to be running. So don't you think that that is uh, what life is really about? And in science also, we have studied Darwin's theory that there is struggle of the struggle for survival and survival of the fittest. Yes, so uh, I mean, all this thing, you know, seems nice, but isn't that what life is really about? So if you look at the way we are today, you know, this is what seems to be, you know, that there is competition, there is a struggle for survival, there is survival of the fittest, you know, at least among the human beings, this is what we see predominantly. But <clears throat> the issue is that, is this the way of the nature? Is this the way of the existence? This we have to study. In fact, if we look at this Darwin theory, for example, you know, when you look at the nature, you can see both types of things. You can see that in the forest, you know, all these animals are coexisting with the plants, with the soil, with the water, and they are enriching each other. In the same place, you have a very tiny grass, you know, growing and the tall trees growing. So this tall tree is not eating away that tiny grass. You know. In fact, this tiny grass is preparing the soil for that tall tree. So all this we can see. So the way of nature is that all these things are coexisting. The soil, the water, the air, the plants, the trees, the shrubs, the animals. Right. Now, when we go to look at it, we look at them with our own preconditionings, with our own way of looking at things, with our own perception. Right. So, if we really want to look at the nature, we have to look at our perception first, our way of looking at it first, and then check whether this is right or not. The problem is that we, in this society today, have somehow, ad somehow adopted a way of living and way of thinking, which is based on opposition, rather than based on relationship and harmony. This is the crisis. And once we have adopted and accepted that mode of thinking and you know living, then when we go to see the nature, we see the same kind or similar kind of things right, happening, though there are other things and they are predominant in nature, but we don't see it because we don't have that perception. So what we are saying is that we have to look at this from two angles. You know, from one, uh, the first angle is that we have to look at the existence. We have to look at the nature, you know, and try to understand the basic design of that nature without being biased from our side. So this is one level of observation. The other level of observation is that we ask our own natural acceptance. We ask our own natural acceptance. For example, we can ask ourselves what is naturally acceptable to us, the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition, the feeling of nurturing others or feeling of exploiting others. So both way we can start, but what we are saying is that let us start from the second one. Let us ask ourselves, right, what is our natural acceptance? to be in relationship or to be in opposition, to nurture others, to exploit others. Similarly, let us ask ourselves, you know, we want to be in harmony or we want to be in contradiction. So this, we can ask each one of us 
and the answer we get is that we want to be in relationship we want to nurture others we want to be in harmony right? not in opposition not exploiting others not being in contradiction in this harmony so this is the fundamental thing to start with and then when we have accepted this relationship this nurturing others this harmony and with that when we look at the nature we can see that this is the very design of the nature very design of the existence okay. and what we see as struggle or as opposition is something you know in the process of reaching to that state of relationship that state of harmony that state of nurturing others so that is more transitional in nature then the stable condition of the nature of the existence so this is the underlying design and this we can see all around so starting from our own natural acceptance we can see that relationship nurturing harmony is what is basically acceptable to me as a human being and second in all my behavior in my work in the nature you know all around this is what i can see as the basic design of nature of existence so what i would say is that start with your own natural acceptance check whether it is for relationship or for opposition it is for nurturing others or exploiting others it is for being in harmony or being in opposition similarly whether it is for coexistence or for struggle start from there and then see all around and you would find that there is relationship there is harmony there is this nurturing each other you know, in every bit and piece of the nature but i would leave it open for you to you know verify for yourself so that would be my response to it but i will leave it open for you to explore investigate and find out for yourself yes this is what i would say <clears throat> that if you look at the society today for example yes you see so much of struggle so much of opposition so much of i think so much of exploitation right <clears throat> so this is all around but are we comfortable with it are we happy with it are we in harmony with it are we feeling fulfilling fulfilled with this if yes then we can go ahead if no then we have to do something and what we have to do is this we have to understand this relationship this harmony this nurturing others this coexistence and be with it right rather than being with opposition with contradiction with <clears throat> struggle with exploitation but this is the choice which we have to make a lot of this exploration has been done in the past and what we were talking about as animal consciousness and human consciousness the finding has been that as long as human being is living with animal consciousness as long as it is assuming itself to be just the body you know and the need of human being as just the need of the body as physical facility then it is likely to miss this harmony this relationship this coexistence this feeling of relationship which is naturally acceptable is at the level of self so unless we realize ourselves as coexistence of self and body and see that yes at the level of self what is naturally acceptable is this feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence if we don't work for it first we are not able to see it then when we are not able to see it we don't work for it 
at the level of body we we see ourselves as separate from each other and many times in opposition with each other and from there this feeling of opposition starts this feeling of you know contradiction this struggle starts and once it is there set in my mind i see everything around with this same perspective so what we see around in the society today is so much of opposition fight struggle war is our own creation it is there no doubt but it is not something which is desirable something which is comfortable for us we want to be out of it and when we try to look at it it is by way of my our own creation right creation of human being living with animal consciousness that is why we are saying that the major development of this holistic development has to do with transforming from animal consciousness to human consciousness where we can understand this relationship harmony and coexistence right and with that understanding we can ensure living in fulfillment in relationship with human being and also with rest of nature ensuring both mutual happiness as well as mutual prosperity yeah this is a good example you know uh, to exemplify how we can look at uh, life so if there are two people in a room and both of them are hungry and they have one chapati one roti right <clears throat> so one way is that both of them want to take away that one roti right and therefore they fight with each other and then they are you know uh, finally they are not able to decide i mean over power one over the other then what will they do they will decide to distribute half each so this is one possibility the other possibility that one is stronger than the other so he will take away that chapati third possibility is that both of them feel that sense of relationship right for example mother and the son is there right and mother wants that at least the stomach of the child should get filled so she would like him to eat the full roti and so will child <coughs> like to do and finally after a lot of discussion they decide that okay let us have half each right so all these three conditions which one would you expect you know to happen and which one would you prefer to do it for yourself so when we look at it from the feeling of relationship the problem is solved you know we happen to eat half each but with a feeling of fulfillment in each one of us on the other hand if we are thinking in terms of struggle in terms of domination you know in terms of fight right we might end up eating half chapati each but here there is so much unhappiness so much of struggle so much of you know damage being done so that makes a lot of sense kanish other if the mother you know would suddenly prefer that the child should get the food and then they come up yes when we say that we need a relationship sometimes i feel that uh, uh, you know i don't really need to be related to everybody so many times there are so many problems in relationship that uh, it almost seems it's better to be separate i mean i would like to be related to some people but not to all so uh, i don't feel the need 
for this relationship with everybody why do i have to be related to everyone see when we talk about relationship there are two aspects one is i mean two major aspects there are other aspects also but there are two major aspects one is the feelings feelings in relationship the other aspect is fulfillment of that feeling you know now what we are saying is that at the level of feeling we want to be related to everyone at the level of fulfillment of that feeling we will do it with those who are in immediate vicinity of us so let me explain this <clears throat> for example when i am traveling in a train right all the sitting people sitting around me i would like to have a feeling of relationship for example a feeling of trust you know for each one of them and from each one of them or i would like to have the feeling of mistrust doubt and what happens to me if i have these two you know if i have the feeling of trust or i have a feeling of mistrust <clears throat> so this is important that when i have this feeling of trust with everyone i can be comfortable i can be fearless right and of course i will be you know careful because when it comes to making program with people i have to evaluate my competence and i will i have to evaluate the competence of the other but as far as the intention is concerned i can see that everybody's intention is to be happy and make others happy so at that level of intention i can have trust on everybody and i can be comfortable with everybody but that does not mean that i go about fulfilling the feeling you know with everyone in the train i certainly have that responsibility for our family member you know for my family members and i would like to do that so what we are saying is that we need to have that feeling for everyone for example that feeling of love we are talking about you know, that yes we are related to everyone everyone is related to me but when it comes to the fulfillment of that feeling i would start with fulfilling this feeling in my immediate vicinity for example the family you know the group of family around me in my workplace my friends that's how i will go about right of course certain slowly i would try to you know expand my you know this family that we are talking you know so we will expand it to the you know in my my colony to my village you know my city and so on to my nation and ultimately the whole world depending upon how competent i am but yes as far as this feeling is concerned i have this natural acceptance for having this feeling of relationship with everyone and i can have that feeling with everyone on the other hand if i do not have this feeling of trust for even a single person whom i have not even met i will have a feeling of mistrust i will have a feeling of fear right and that feeling of fear is what is going to cause unhappiness to me right. so if you think that somebody will come and stab back at you right that feeling itself makes you unhappy makes you fear feel and fearful and therefore unhappy so it is important to have this feeling of relationship with everyone if i want to be in a state of fearlessness in a state of you know uh, happiness in continuity but when it comes to fulfillment of that feeling yes whoever is there in my vicinity i will try to fulfill this feeling in relationship with that person 
so i will have the feeling for all but i am not going to go around and try to fulfill it with everyone you know so that feeling is there whoever comes across right i express those feelings with him i share with those feelings with him i fulfill those feelings with him so this is one thing second thing which uh, you know the first question that is there that in that relationship i have this feeling of relationship and in that relationship i would certainly expect that the other person also has that similar feeling you know that those naturally acceptable feelings <clears throat> to have that a kind of expectation is very fine but to have this expectation that this other person has the competence to fulfill that is the problem the other person may or may not have the competence to fulfill that feeling so for example i would certainly expect that every one of us behave with a feeling of respect with each other so this would be my expectation and this is the right expectation in relationship because this is the feeling which is naturally acceptable to each one of us but a person will be able to express this feeling of respect only when he has this feeling of respect only when he has understood the relationship and based on that understanding of relationship he has the feeling of respect for everyone and when he has this feeling he will be able to share express that feeling so that competence is there then he will be able to express that feeling of respect so when i am interacting with anybody i am feeling related to him i certainly expect that he should you know express that feeling of respect in the relationship but i will also evaluate his competence right so though i expect that he should behave with the feeling of respect but i will be considerate to see whether he has that competence or not so if he is expressing this feeling of respect i can see that yes he has the competence and he is doing it if he is not expressing that feeling of respect right rather than doubting his intention i would you know evaluate his competence you know, to find out whether he has that competence or he does not have that competence and certainly if he is not expressing this feeling of respect it only means that he does not have the competence right he does not have the competence to do it so i would not expect that my expectation is fulfilled every time but i would certainly expect that in the relationship what will really work is the feeling of respect and not disrespect but when i look at uh, like some relatives i mean uh, why should i keep trying i mean i don't have feeling of opposition but why not just avoid that relationship only because it's uh, so difficult to uh, i keep working but from the other side uh, uh, you know the other person is not expressing anything so it seems very difficult to do this yeah it is difficult so there are three possibilities one is that i feel related and i work for this relationship from my side second is that i am indifferent to it third is i am in opposition to the other right the third option at least is now you know uh, kind of uh, omitted so now we have two options one is to be in relationship and work for relationship second is to be indifferent so i will keep this choice open for you to decide whether to work to be feel it being in relationship and work for relationship or to be indifferent i don't want to be indifferent but uh, uh, i feel it is very difficult to try to do this when the other people don't respond yeah. i'm coming to that then you know yes. that if i want to be related and i want to work for 
you know, relationship. Then I have two options. One is that I work for it and I immediately look for the result. Second is that I work for it okay, and I understand that, you know, it is a matter of his sanskar and it will take time for him to understand things, evaluate things, you know, and get rid of his otherwise sanskar. Right? So I work with him, I do whatever I have to do, but I do not expect that, you know, things will change immediately and he will start responding rather than reacting. So these are two possibilities that I continue to work without expecting the results or you know expecting that development of competence in the other immediately. The other is that I work for it and I keep myself open that yes, it takes time for anybody to look at his sanskar and evaluate that sanskar and purify that sanskar. Right. Therefore, I do what I have to do from my side. And I do not have this kind of expectation that immediately the other person should change. So then these two possibilities are there. So we can try both these possibilities and see what works. Mm -hmm. okay. It takes time for us. It takes time for others also. Yes, yes. When we are working with our sanskar, we can see how hard it is, you know. Mm, yes. Work with our own sanskar. So, so is the case with the other. True. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, there is a lot of experiment to be done. What I would suggest is just a kind of way of going about, you know, way of exploring for oneself, but each one of us has to work on it. And when we work on it, then we really see, you know, the results. And also see the subtlety of it. This definite conduct, uh, it looks like, you know, people will become like robots. They'll, you know, do the same thing every day. They'll do the same thing. So what is that what it means or something else, this definite conduct? Yeah, this is important. In fact, uh, one of the uh, uh, positions that is taken in the, uh, uh, beliefs today is that if you have a definite conduct or if you are asked for a definite conduct by the society, you know, it would mean that you subscribe to the norms of the society right, at the cost of your freedom. So this is the notion. You will become like a machine, you will become like a robot, right? And you will be programmed by the society. <clears throat> what we are trying to say is that when we ask our own natural acceptance, we will get this answer about what is right for us, what is not right for us. So we were taking this, this example that <clears throat> we want to be in relationship or in opposition. What is naturally acceptable to us? But there it is easy to see that yeah, it is relationship. It's easy to see that we want to be in relationship, that is a relationship, the feeling of relationship is what is naturally acceptable. Mm. Similarly, we can ask, you know, in relationship, whether the feeling of respect is naturally acceptable or disrespect is naturally acceptable. The answer would be the feeling of respect. Now, what we are saying when we are saying human conduct is simply this, that whenever we are, you know, interacting with any human being, right, we interact with this feeling of respect which is naturally acceptable to me. In that sense, my conduct is definite. Right. So it is not that sometimes I express the feeling of respect, sometimes disrespect. You know. Sometimes I'm very courteous, sometimes I'm shouting. Right. 
so when we are saying definite conduct this is what we mean that in relationship first we are in relationship with other right? we are sharing this you know we are being with relation, feeling of relationship with other and we are trying to fulfill that feeling of relationship in the process we have this feeling of trust respect affection and so on right and we are interacting with other human beings with this feelings and not otherwise that is the meaning of definiteness of conduct now when we have this definiteness of conduct in terms of these feelings then there is lot of creativity possible possible in our expression so as long as far as the feeling is concerned they are going to be definite as far as expression is concerned there will be lot of creativity there will be lot of creativity for example if i have to express my respect to an elder i can do it in one way if i have to express my feeling of respect to my friend i'll do it in another way if i have to express the same feeling of respect right to the younger one i'll do it in eight different way right. but all these are definite conduct so if i have to express my respect to an elder i will go and touch his feet right this is my way of expressing my respect when i am interacting with my friend i will take note of his coming i will say namaste or shake hands right and if i have to you know express my respect to an young person younger than me then i will give my blessings or you know offer him something you know all that i can do so there can be different ways of expression of my respect but in all these three cases i will have the feeling of respect and that is what is expected in the relationship so that definiteness is there in terms of the feeling creativity is there in terms of the expression of it so i do not become a machine a robot in this sense that all my expressions become all rigid but my feelings are definite my feelings are definite with that those feelings i am comfortable with in and i am expressing this feeling to the other in many ways there is lot of creativity there and when this feeling reaches to the other it is comfortable for the other also if i can see this i can appreciate that in different societies in different cultures people have developed different ways of expression for these same feelings so i can understand that i can appreciate that and when i am interacting with anybody who belongs to a different you know society a different culture which has developed a different way of expression of this feeling of respect then i will learn that feeling you no know, expression until i learn i can at least appreciate you know that they have a different way of expressing this same feeling of respect and i have a different way of expressing it right so when we talk about definite conduct we are saying we are definite in terms of understanding of things we are definite in terms of feelings you know in our relationship with the other there there is definiteness when it comes to expressing that feeling there can be lot of creativity in fact you can really be creative when you have this right feelings this definite feelings because if it is the right feeling it is naturally acceptable to the other so you will be able to realize your creativity 
on the other hand if you have a feeling which is not naturally acceptable to the other then you may try to be lot of you know have lot of creativity but the other will not accept it because that feeling is not naturally acceptable to the other so you might try different you know creative ways of dominating others exploiting others but the other is not accepting it so all your trial will fail all your trial will fail today that is the problem that you try to dominate on others in very creative ways do lot of research in the name of management right? and does not work there is more and more of opposition there is more and more of struggle there is more and more of war right? uh, that's so, why this undivided society it sounds like a very you know far away thing like a utopian utopian concept something like an ideal state which can't be realized so all that <laughs> that it, it does sound like that i i think three things we should you know keep in mind number one what is desirable what is naturally acceptable that is one then what is feasible number two and third is that how do we go about it how do we work for it of course there is four thing that you can also keep in mind that if we do otherwise where do we end up so this is four aspect we should consider so number one the question is what is our natural acceptance to be in opposition to be indifferent or to be in relationship the answer is to be in relationship now if you ask you know what is your natural acceptance to be related to one to many to everyone to none the answer would be <clears throat> you know i want to be related to everyone that is my natural acceptance and when i feel related to everyone that is the feeling of love and what we are calling as undivided society is an expression of this feeling of love whether it can be achieved right now or it will take hundreds of years to achieve it but this is the expression of this feeling of love when i feel related to everyone i belong to a undivided society whether it is there outside or not there you know at the level of my you know feeling at the level of my imagination it is there <coughs> second thing is how do we go about it the way simple way is to work with your understanding first then work with your feeling then work with your thought right and slowly we will able to move up of course it will take time but this will be our direction right if you look at where we are what we find is that you know what is being promoted in this society predominantly today is not the relationship but the feeling of position you know feeling of struggle struggle for survival that right? feeling of domination now if that is what is being promoted in the society we can see where we are going to end up we are we are ending up in a condition where every nation every society is trying to dominate over the other society right every nation is trying to dominate every other nation right they try, want to dominate the whole world and we can see it is not possible now it is amply clear that even that is not possible right so undivided society may look very far but this one nation dominating every other nation is also you know very far but this is the direction we have you know acquired now 
every one of his, us is trying to dominate the other and the whole world and as a result you know all big nations are spending more than 50 percent of their resources preparing for war and with no result with no result so if we start working for this undivided society it may take time to reach there but at least we will be able to save this 50 percent of the resources right and there will be enough for everyone to eat and fulfill their basic physical needs so these three things we have to consider number one where we do really want to be what is our natural acceptance right then how do we go about it and then if we don't do this what else do we do and through that where do we reach so i would say that we have this acceptance for being in relationship you know that natural acceptance for being in relationship with one with many with everyone so this feeling of love is something which is naturally acceptable to us and if we have that feeling of less love right we have this notion of undivided society right at least i have realized it within myself in case i have this feeling of love and then it can be multiplied it can be multiplied at least it will set the right direction even if it takes thousands of years that is very clear 